To make this actually interesting, let's add some particles. First, I'm going to dock this guy. And right now we have this drag here null that is beneath the meteorite. So let's add another null. Rename it to particles. And let's just move it so it's inside of this meteorite. We can pause it so we have a better chance of getting this right. That feels about centered. Now let's add some particles. Now by default, we get this checkerboard pattern on these flat plane particles. So let's just tweak these settings so we can get a bit of a tail coming off of this. We can up the birth rate to 50. Keep the spray angle at zero, just just because we want it to be straight up here. And the speed, let's turn up to 0.5. And we want the speed of all these to be pretty similar. So let's change the variation down to 10%. And these particles are way too small. So let's increase the scale to 0 0.05, maybe even 0 0.06. And right now, all of these particles are coming out of the same exact point. So let's change the type to ring. So now that they're coming out of this ring shape, but we'll change the radius down to 0 0.05. Now it's looking a little chaotic with all these checkerboards. So let's add a material before we go any further. Down here, we can add a material and then double click it and rename it to matte meteorite tail. And you can see it's completely blue. That's because the directional lights are pointing straight up and down. And these you can see as I turn the camera change from white to blue. And that's because billboarding is set on for the particles. And so they're always facing the camera. So if the lights are parallel to these, then they're not hitting it because they're going right by it. So we only get the color information from that ambient light. So to solve this, we can just change this to flat. That way it ignores the lights and just renders whatever's in here. I have a texture I like using for clouds and fog and anything that's similar to that. So I'll drag that in. So in my material, I can now change the texture to this smoke material and then change the color to a little bit more of like a sandy, sandy material to more match the meteorite. And in the render options, we can change this opacity down a little bit. But now you can see it's clipping through this alpha information is not rendering properly. And there's a couple ways we can fix this. The best thing we can do is take these particles and move it below the meteorite. That way the meteorite renders and then the particles have a chance to render around it. So that solves this issue. Now let's go back in the particle emitter, change the name of this to meteorite tail. And let's increase the lifespan just so it's a little bit longer. And to make this behave a little bit more realistically, we're going to switch the spray angle and then add some force to it. So in the X axis of the spray angle, we'll change it to 180. So now it's shooting straight down. But in the force tab, we'll add acceleration and change the strength to something like one. So now you can see these particles are being emitted downward but then they're being pushed up. So now we need to increase this lifespan quite a bit. And it looks like they're being pushed down a little bit too much. So we'll change the speed from 0.5 to let's see point, 0.3 looks pretty good. 
these are moving a little slow, so we can increase the intensity of the strength more. And to counter that, we'll have to increase the speed of the emission as well. So now we have a decent little tail, but as you can see, when they disappear, they just turn off. There's no fading. And this tail might be a little bit long, so let's turn it down a bit. For the lifespan, we can do 1.5 and change the variation to 25. That way, this area is a little bit more even. But to solve the issue of these disappearing, we have to pull in a script. So we have this particle fade script that we'll drag in. And that will make a copy of the script in this project folder. And now we can open this up and see what we're working with. So what's happening is it takes this emitter and then it changes the RGB and A values and the size as well. So this will help fade it to zero opacity, and this changes the scale over the time. So let's change this to negative 0.1 for starters, and then change the emitter name to meteorite tail, and save. Now you can see these are fading out and they're also getting smaller. It looks like they're getting a little too small. So we'll change this to 0 0.05 in the negative. Now they fade nice and softly and they also get a little bit smaller. So we get more of a tail shape behind the meteorite. We can ignore this warning here because we already changed the name of the emitter in the script. So now let's add a second emitter. We'll just duplicate this meteorite tail. Let's change the name to meteorite cloud. Now this one, we're gonna make a little bit wider and not as long. And now you can see we already have an issue where these are overlapping. We're getting that alpha issue again. So to solve this in the material under advanced render options, we need to disable right to depth buffer. So when the particles are created, the position is still calculated, so they still appear correctly around the meteorite, but they don't write depth information to themselves. So other particles don't know where they are in Z space, and so they render properly. Let's also duplicate this material because we want a new one for every particle emitter and we'll change this name to match. So this cloud, we're gonna make a little shorter and a little redder. So first we can just change this redness and then apply it to this cloud. And now we can start making changes to the actual emitter. Let's try increasing this spray angle. That's making it go out a little bit more. And the lifespan needs to be a lot shorter. Let's try 0.75. And that looks okay. And these pieces, these little circles here are a little too intense. So let's turn the scale up and then the opacity down. It looks like 0.1 works pretty well. Maybe the lifespan needs to be a little bit longer, maybe just one second. And now, now let's add this name to our script as well. We need to copy and paste this and then add meteorite cloud here. And save that again. Now we get these fading off really nice and softly. We can also make them scale down a little bit more because they're still quite large when they disappear. Let's try changing this to negative 0.1. Now that looks pretty nice. You get this nice big cloud here 
but then they fade off pretty quickly. Now to make this look like it's actually on fire, let's duplicate this emitter again. And this one we can change to meteorite fire. And again, duplicate the material and change the name to match. And for this one, the key difference is the material is going to be set to add. And we need to assign this material, of course. And now you can see we're getting a lot more brightness because the color values of this emitter are being added rather than just being calculated normally. But it's looking a little crazy. It's like a fireball, not a meteorite. So we need to tone it down and kind of focus this energy. Let's turn the spray angle down to something really low, like 0.5 or 5. And maybe the particles are a little large. Let's change the scale to 0 0.08. And let's increase the birth rate and the variation. Now that's looking pretty good. It looks like there might be a little bit too much on that front edge, so we can turn the speed down to maybe 0 0.3, maybe 0 0.35. And these also are not fading, they're just disappearing, so we need to add this to the script as well. So we'll copy this, paste it again, and update the name here. And for the size, we'll see if this negative 0.1 works. That looks good, but I think they're getting a little too small too quickly. So let's change this to negative 0 0.075. Oh, something went horribly wrong. <laughs> um, looks like there's an extra negative in there. And again, okay, so we want negative 0 0.075. So this is scaling negative and then they're getting really large in the negative value. So this hopefully should do the trick. There we go, now we're back. All right, this is looking pretty good. I think the cloud here could be pushed up a little bit faster. It's looking a little ambiguous. So under the force, let's increase this to two. Maybe that spray angle can come down a little bit. Let's try 15. And we can increase this radius to 0 0.08. That way it covers the outer edges of this a little bit more. Let's do the same for the fire as well. All right, now there's one more particle emitter we want to add. This one, let's duplicate the tail and call it meteorite chunks. And this one, we're going to make a new material. Name it matte meteorite chunks. And we'll make it flat again and just kind of make it a dark brown. And then apply it to these chunks. Now this looks perfect. <laughs> um, so in the chunks, we'll change the particle shape to a triangle based pyramid. And in the particle um, settings, we'll change the tilt to zero. So they're not slanted like that. And essentially what we're trying to do is make these become little pieces falling off. So in the shape, we'll turn the height maybe to four, the scale quite a bit smaller to 0 0.02, maybe even 0 0.01. And we can increase this variation and so for this base radius, we want this to be really small, maybe 0.2. Even 0.1 might look good. 
Now it looks like there's almost some motion blur applied to little specks of stuff coming off. Maybe they're too tall. Yeah, that looks a little better. Now if we zoom in and pause, we can see the shape of these, but it almost looks like they're falling down, not up. So we need to change the direction of this. So in the tilt, if we just change this to 180, they should spin around. Let's reset and start over. So now you can see it looks like they're actually falling up since it's kind of mimicking motion blur where there's the large area here and then it tapers off. And so there you have it. That's how to make something look really cool using just a bunch of bunch of particles. One thing to keep in mind though is if you get too many particles in a scene, performance is gonna suffer. So you'll have to dial down the birth rate if you start seeing stuttering in your scenes. While testing this filter on my phone, I quickly realized an issue. As you can see here, it looks like the particles are being pushed back in the Z axis rather than going up in the Y. What I think is happening is the plane tracker isn't registering which axis is which. So to fix this, let's take our particles and instead of pushing them up in the Y, let's try pushing them back in the Z. Now it looks incorrect here, but let's test it in the app and see how it looks. Now the particles are moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, as we scale it up and down, the particles don't scale with it. And that's a limitation of doing plane tracking objects. There is a way to tie the scale of the plane tracker to the size of the particles, but that setup is pretty in depth and we'll get to that later. For now, this is good enough.